you are in the Mentoring Matters discussion room. This is sponsored by the Mentoring Club. And the Mentoring Club is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We're based out of Mountain View, California. Our mission is to provide a mentoring community for aspiring and seasoned leaders. Anywhere in the world, we help working people find mentors who can guide them to develop the skills they need to achieve their career and life goals. We help mentees fulfill their goals through meaningful work uh, that creates positive impact in the world. And our long-term vision is that as mentees become leaders, our dream is for them to become mentors to others. Right now, we have mentors and mentees, over 200 mentors and mentees in six continents in 31 countries. For this particular room, we are featuring our mentee and mentor partnership stories so that we can learn from them. And Hong is our moderator and host for this session. So I will turn over the floor to Hong. Great. Thanks, Liso. And welcome, everyone. We have a special session, and I will be glad to tell you why it's special. So, uh, because we are the mentoring club, we talk about mentoring and mentorship a lot. And broadly understood, it's really to get advice and guidance from somebody more experienced in order to grow personally and professionally. That typically, we normally understand that as people within a, a single company, somebody senior and somebody junior. But would that work for business owners, especially a business owner facing impending collapse of the business due to COVID lockdown? And also, would it work if the mentor is in an entirely different continent, half the world away, in a different time zone, working in a different industry, in a different culture, would that work? More surprisingly, you find out also tonight that the most important thing is not some sort of technical knowledge, but it's fundamentally about a mindset. All right, so let's welcome Naj Saragoza, calling from the Philippines. Probably it's morning, evening there. Is it? It's evening morning. Or morning? Yeah, morning. It's 8 a.m. Yeah. 8 a.m. Okay, yeah, with all the time change. Thanks for calling so early, uh, Naj. All right, so let's welcome Naj. Naj, please give us a short introduction about yourself so we get to know you a little bit better and set the stage. Oh, sure. Thank you so much, Hong and Lisel, for this opportunity to share our story. I'm Naj Zaragoza. I live in the Philippines. I wear many hats here. I usually describe myself as a hybrid entrepreneur. I'm a business owner, makeup artist, and my day job is financial advisor. Naj is a professional and business owner. Tell us a little bit about your business, your studio, Uncovered Muse, I think the name of the studio. Who are your clients and, and what do you offer to them? Oh, sure. It's Uncover Muse Studios. Initially, when we built Uncover Muse Studios in 2014, it was for photography and makeup services only, providing fine art photography to clients it evolved to creating creative content and digital entertainment from 2017 onwards. The content is owned by the studio or uh, is it owned by artists that you work with? Sometimes it's collaboration and sometimes mm -hmm. it's mostly ours. By the end of 2019, when COVID was about to start, how many years has the studio been in business? Please share that. And my next question is, uh, how much does that represent to you and your family financially, the business of that of the studio? We were five years and a half, going six years. We've always wanted to go full time on our businesses, especially Uncover Me Studios. But as I would share with Mina, it's a big struggle to work as full time creative here in the Philippines, you'll find that most artists need to still maintain a day job to survive. But that was our vision. I have a day job. We're also managing the businesses. I would assume that five and a half years in, you already started to build some sort of momentum. Am I correct with the studio? Actually, in 2017, we almost closed our mm. studio. I had this offer to be a manager in my financial advisor job. But 
after thinking about the pros and cons and we've decided that I won't take the job. It was an opportunity for me to let's do something about this business and that's where we pivoted to like creative content and basically mm. digital entertainment. And then you continue under COVID 2020 yes. and then in March 2021, something happened in March 2021. We had our second full lockdown here in the Philippines and we knew that if that happened again, we might lose our digital content studio because it's pretty much new in operations. We're lucky to, that we were able to survive the first year of pandemic, but in mm -hmm. 2021, uh, that all went dark for us. A lot of businesses have been decimated under um, COVID-19, literally completely closed and leaving the area, uh, literally. Quite a lot of them, uh, even after the first lockdown, um, uh, yeah, so not completely a surprise that that challenge came to Natch in, in the Philippines. And then you were facing closing down that business. What did you do? How did you look for help? Did you intend to look for help right away? Or how did that come about and how did you look for help? I constantly look for help and I knew I needed help badly for managing businesses, but didn't know where to look or who to approach. So initially, I didn't really look for help at that time. I just wanted to get out of the usual social media platforms because it was giving me a lot of anxieties and I didn't feel safe. I went on, um, what I did, I went on exploring other new apps and saw Clubhouse, then I downloaded. I was like on a wait list for a week, <laughs> waiting for someone to invite me. And then from there, this is where it all started. Me finding support and stumbled upon the cell and the mentoring club. It feels like serendipity. After joining the mentoring club, how much longer after that were you introduced to Mina? I was browsing through my photos and I couldn't find that when exactly I saw Lisa, mm. um, maybe like um, two to three months, and then I stumbled upon your Thursday room. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, I was regularly attending just to, to see what mentoring mm. club is and all that. And then after three months, I messaged Lisa and asked her if I can be a mentee. So that's where it started around mm. August. I would like to introduce Mina. So Mina was born in China, started working already in China as a software engineer in Beijing. And then she immigrated to Silicon Valley in 2013. And while a software engineer in 2013, she quickly started to develop her entrepreneurial side, her real estate investment, her whole portfolio that she built with her husband. Seven years later, by 2020, she started to operate an actual hospitality business, not just as investor, but as an operator and one of the properties she had invested in. So by the end of 2020, Mina became certified business and life coach as well. That's what eventually led to her meeting with Naj. So welcome Mina, please give us a short intro. I'm uh, glad to be here. Um, I wear many hats too. I sometimes wondered whether large find me because she likes my hats. <laughs> so I am a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a owner of multiple business and I'm an investor. I'm also very passionate about software engineering. So I've been in business and investing for since 2013. In 2020, when I became a coach, because every time I have a challenge, the power that get me out of the dark place is I imagine myself solving this challenge, then I will be able to guide other people and help other people. Coaching and mentoring is the perfect tool, environment to do that, to help other people with what I learned. That's my journey, I, how I met Large and then being able to shed some light into her life. And uh, how did you become a coach? I be honest, at the beginning, coaching is just a hobby for me. I mm. enjoy meeting people and enjoy helping them. 
I got serious when I started to take the coaching program from EverCoach. They are a big coaching education organization. And then through the development of the course, I understand who I want to help and how I can help them. That's when I become more serious into coaching that really looking at my marketing strategy and how I find clients and how I help them. Evercoach, that's quite famous, first of all, and quite visible on the internet. Any comment about Evercoach, the program? Oh, it's great. We have, I think our cohort has about 20 people. It's a small group. The community we build just within that group, we're still keeping in touch. I finished last September. I'm still in touch with the people in the program. I was sharing with Lizzo a, a big gig that I'm doing tomorrow. I'm having a meeting with the founder of Evercoach. He's interested wow. to invite me to speak in his podcast wow. about why I started my coaching. Wow. I really like the instructor, the material, the training, and then also the people who attend the program with me is amazing people. Wow, that's uh, quite a story. Yeah, and, and congratulations for standing out and being invited uh, to speak. Thank right? you. What do you think in your mind are the top characteristics of a great coach? My whole message, the people I want to help is to help them walk the freedom path. What I mean by that is to build financial freedom, have more time and have a fantastic emotional experience while you are building your business and building your wealth. I know there are many good coaches there for me to admit that I am a good coach is that I walk the talk. So I'm not learning coaching program and then just to say, hey, you need to have a positive mindset. My coaching is coming from my years of business developer experience. And it's just now, instead of working on the business, I'm helping other business owners or professionals who want to transit into business owners. For me, a good coach, the good feature is that you have to be able to practice what you are teaching, what you are coaching on. Very good. So it's not ivory tower, it's not theoretical, it's, it's living, right? Um, for, for that matter, how do you distinguish the fact that you learn something and practice and, and succeed? Do you need to be careful to not generalize too far and say, if you do as I, I did? you would succeed like me? Is that part of it or no? I think a lot of people have misunderstanding of mentoring mm. and coaching. Mm. They think a good coach need to help me get my outcome, but that's only one part of the puzzle. If you have a great coach, but you don't make efforts, you still won't have the outcome. It's not like you can just do nothing and then have a great coach and you will succeed. It's both sides. Your coach mm -hmm. needs to be really great. And most of effort is actually from you. You are making the result. The coach is showing you a different perspective, a different mindset, a different maybe actions, what you need at that point. But all the efforts, 100% is from the mentee. That's why I love working with Large so much because mm -hmm. she took actions. She took the advice we shared in the meeting and then she will put into action, not just say, oh, that's a good idea and not, don't do anything. I think that's the thing people have to realize. You have to take the action. Coach is just the guide. Is it important that the coach and the mentee uh, face the same kind of issues or have gone through the same similar experiences or that's not necessary? It's purely about mindset. That is a great question. To me, a coach is not the Swiss tool set. Coach is not a perfect person. It does not mean you have to be like 20 years or 30 years ahead of people. Sometimes you might be just two years or three years ahead of the people who you are coaching or mentoring, and then you understand their challenge. You be able to share how you tackle that challenge at that time. But your question is, does it has to be the exact challenge? Mm. I don't think so, because mm. all problems are the problems of perspectives. Mm. And it may be the a different challenge. Let me use an example. So delegation, 
it might work in different challenges that people have, but the concept is the same. Hey, you need to be able to leverage other people to get what you want. So I don't think it has to be exact challenge or exact field. You have to understand is the problem solving the mindset that's common. What's general for solving problems? It's an absolute faith in the fact that certain principles cut across many, many different specific contexts and situations, which is at the same time hopeful to hear. What were your first impressions of Natch when you you guys first met? She reached out to me, and I sent her a mentee intake form, and then she filled in and sent back to me. My first impression is. She wears so many hats. I wonder how. <laughs> <laughs> I want one.、Um, so, I my first impression was she does a lot of things. She has, as she introduced at the beginning, she loves doing things. She has that passion, and I can see that she actually take efforts in completing everything. She had this opportunity to meet me, so she, I send the. Intake form, and she sent to me before the meeting. It's just this basic quality. I think some people may not even care. They don't think, "Oh, I'm just going to a meeting. Why do I need to fill the form?" So that's my first impression of her: responsible, taking action, very ambitious. If I may point out, I saw a training clip from YC Incubator for tech startups, and one of the partners was sharing. That for him, what distinguishes extraordinary CEOs from just good CEOs, and he said, what separates them is really the fact that the extraordinary CEOs always complete what they said they would. They may come back with more issues, or things may get worse, or whatever, but whatever they say they would do. Natch, how often did you end up meeting with Mina? How long? How does it work out? When Lisel told me to reach out to Mina, it took me some time to to really, you know, email Mina because I was dealing with personal、um, things. And then finally on November,、uh, we met twice, and then after that, it became once a month. So twice a month, and then once a month. Meeting here,、uh, Nash means meeting online,、uh, probably by Zoom. Zoom, I think.、Um, yes. Yes. No, I actually fly to the Philippines to meet. <laughs> <laughs> I want. I would like that. That is commitment. Mina,、uh, how did you got to decide what Nadge needed? So you talked to Nadge, and at some point you said you said to yourself, "Okay, Nadge needs this, and I need to provide her guidance in some direction." How did? What was it, and how did you come to that conclusion? I asked Large what. She felt about her current situation, and the feeling I got at that time is, I am in a really dark place. And she mentioned a lot about COVID. COVID did this. COVID,、um, you know, impact my business.、Um, she's in the wedding business, and then, you know, I won't not able to get clients. That's when I said, "Hey, large, try my hat." The hat I give to her is. It's not about the situation. Everybody, we are all in COVID. I I bought a boutique in with restaurants with guest rooms in 2020, one month prior to the lockdown.、Mm-hmm. But this is coming to different mindset. It's sometimes we look when things like COVID happens, we look at we want to get back to before, and we think, oh, there's no future, or the future will be worse. For me, and this is what I shared with Large. It's just focus on what you can do daily. It basically, the first year for me and I, what I showed to her is also just to stay afloat, just keep going, and then the better days will be coming. So I think that's the switch I saw. I hope I turn on the switch at that time because every meeting afterwards, she just keep action, you know, taking actions, and then just take whatever coming at her, and then keep bringing actually. Let her share her story. She is fantastic. Nadge, yes. So, can you please share that story of、uh, coming out of a very dark space? The first meeting with Mina, she already gave me this headlight illustration, and and that stuck with me. 
because I was trying to control the uncontrollable events, which this is a global pandemic. And the headlight illustration that she gave is you're driving and it was it's really, really dark and you just concentrate on the headlight because you really don't see the end of the road. So that really stuck with me and it helped me in a lot of decision making. So every time I decide on something, I check, can I control this or is it part of the uncontrollable situation? So that's where it started me having this new mindset. For Naj to come out and describe the dark space she was in, uh, that takes a number of things that are extraordinary. The vulnerability, the, the willingness to share, and also the fact that she feels safe, completely safe with Mina to be sharing that. I think that in itself is quite extraordinary for two people who don't know each other from opposite side of the world. Can that, I add that? one thing, Hong? Yes, please do. Um, yes. I think this goes back to your question about uh, characteristics of a good coach. Mm, um, right. mm -hmm. I mentioned this a lot in my coaching sessions or mentoring sessions. This is not a judgment. If I say, hey, your mindset, you can use a new mindset. I'm not judging how you did it in the past, how you are negative or what. I'm not judging that. I'm just pointing out there's a better ways. And I think that's really helping. It's in any conversation as well. Often when you, the reason why you don't want to reach out, you don't want to be vulnerable is because you don't want to be judged. You don't want to be, you know, say, hey, I'm in a dark place and people say, hey, you should be positive mm -hmm. or you, you, you did something wrong. Mm -hmm. That's what I try to be really, really careful facilitate is that I'm not judging you. I'm sharing a better ways. And I hope large felt that as well, because I feel our sessions being smooth, that we have mm. that safe space. It's incumbent on the mentor to set up that safe space, literally, so that the mentee can walk in. Uh, Natch, you were about to say something. Thank you for bringing that up. Because just to give you a perspective, our culture here in the Philippines, we don't really speak out. And that's something that I wanted to change or maybe inspire Filipinos to speak their minds when they need to. I really needed help. Reading Mina's LinkedIn profile before we met, I got so inspired. I wanted to transition to full entrepreneurship and she did that. For me to get from point A to B, I really have to tell her that these are my struggles. It takes skills to set up that context and it takes courage to step in. And that's extraordinary. The second part that's extraordinary, I mean, in terms of coaching and mentoring is this, right? That for somebody who needs help, and that's why the, the situation is set up in the first place, sometimes the person who needs help is truly in a very dark space where things don't look good, period, right? And therefore, the challenge there is for the mentor to bring hope. There's a formula that sticks with me. That is, hope is the courage of believing in a better possibility in the face of really probable disaster. You see the hope of something possible that could be good or better. And that's what the mentor sometimes will bring to the mentee. You brought a really good point. I don't like to use hope, that word, mm. but I know we are talking about exactly the same thing. Mm. Hope, the same I always dreamed about is in the beginning of a, a coaching and mentoring session, they had challenges. And then at the end of the session, they feel much better just from feelings perspective. But I think we are talking about exactly the same thing. You are using hope. Mm. What I like to point is clarity and certainty. It's wow. exactly what you elaborate, what hope is. It's by end of meeting, you are certain there's a better future. By end of the meeting, you are certain you can take these actions and make change. And by end of the, this meeting, you have that clarity of what you want. How can you do it? and you can do it. That is very important. It's take both sides. It's not just coach or just the mentee. It needs both to collaborate. You are on the boat together. 
the mentee is the one who is boating, like who is actually take the heavy lifting. And the coach might be, you know, hey, just tweak a little bit, go that direction. But is the mentee in control of the boat? Mina, how do you assess her progress and keep track and adjust? So this is the fun part. I don't assess her mm. and I don't keep track of her because it's mm. her life, her business. Right. That's the thing I want to be really, really clear there. A mentor is not your babysitter. It's mm. not your manager. It's not your team member. Everything is in your control. If you have a great session and you have so much clarity, so much actions, and after the meeting, you don't do it yourself, mm. then it's in you. Mm. That's why Large and I, we meet at first twice a month because I want to get that mindset right. And then afterwards, we meet once a month because I want her to be able to use what she had heard and learned to actually do that self-coach and to be able to pull herself. And then we have another session. There might be new finding. I'm not assessing her. I'm not babysitting her. It's in her. She made so much progress just in these few months. It's not about me. It's not mm. me, it's her. She did mm. all that. Nash, can you share with us how things happen for you and how you feel about it in terms of both accomplishing positive outcomes for yourself and in terms of learning something? Definitely, it takes a lot of willpower to keep making progress each day. So when I learned that mindset is very important, the negative thoughts kept me in the dark for this whole pandemic time it naturally manifested to bad things that happened to me, like my freak accident where I almost lost my left eye. Mina gave me those, the headlight illustration, and I learned to take control of my mindset. And amazing how this habit led me to creating and finding new opportunities um, rather than sit and wait or dwell on the negativity around me. And one of the outcome is we were able to get funding from a valued investor from, for our new business. And this is what Mina mean when she said success is 95% mindset and 5% execution. That's where I got to uh, a point where I have to really set my mind into something and try to focus on the headlights. Can you elaborate a little bit so we can understand the famous formulas for success uh, of 95% mindset and 5% execution? Is mindset a matter of focus? Is mindset a matter of uh, willpower, uh, of determination? Is mindset a matter of perspective and approach? Uh, can you elaborate that a little bit with us, you know, in your case? I think it's all of it for me. I was in a dark, dark place and I would dwell on those negativity. I think it's more of the mindfulness as well. So you are, you are mindful of mm -hmm. these thoughts and then that's where you put your focus on and the willpower to make progress each day. You know, every day is not a, a win for me. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> that would be so, too easy, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like a fairy tale. It's not, but it's, it's more so really working towards that goal. Could I share what mindset is to me? Please do. I think yes. it's a very interesting question. Mm. To me, mindset is how you think about things. Mm. It's the operating system of your brain, of your life. Just take an example. When COVID hit, people say hospitality industry is doomed, hit the mm, hardest. Right. There's many people around us, lost of restaurant, lost business. If I take the mindset, say, I, can, I can't start a hospitality business. I can't run this hotel during COVID. I made a huge mistake of buying this hotel. That's how I will end up being. I will sell the hotel at cheap mm -hmm. price and then think I made a huge investment choice, a really big mistake. But if I focus on what I can do daily, I'm still walking guests into my hotel. I'm still serving guests every day. Some are still like the hotel is full because people around us, like from Toronto, from Ottawa, they come to me. Then I see a different perspective. That's mm -hmm. when that headlight come in. One side I see that in the news, people say hospitality is doomed. The other side focus on what's in front of me. We are doing as much as we can, we are doing as best as we can to stay afloat 
because we know better days are in 2021, in 2022. And we have proved that in 2021, we're already profiting and we improve the property value by millions of dollars. So that's the mindset is how you look at things and how you think that will decide how you take actions. Oh, thanks for sharing. That's absolutely precious. I mean, it's magical, isn't it? You touched on something I've been observing throughout the pandemic. I, like I mentioned earlier, right? My own observation, not experience, not direct firsthand experience, but being in downtown San Jose where people don't come to the office anymore, I actually got to observe directly that all these hospitality businesses just shut down. I mean, they simply could not survive. And one of them is a cafe, right? Uh, Frascati Cafe. They were highly rated, uh, historic, very much appreciated. They had to shut down themselves. And in their exact spot, two African-American sisters open a cafe. And I asked them, they, they never did that before. They are completely new to the business and, and the business just flourished during COVID on the exact same spot, Nirvana Soul. They feature on TV and everywhere. It's like magic. <laughs> what can I say? Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. If I could share just really quick, share Warren yes. Buffett's one of his quote that I really like is when others are fearful, be greedy. That's exactly why people can succeed in 2008 in COVID is when other people are fearful, be greedy. That's what exactly that two African American sisters did. Tremendous. And it boils down from what you say, it boils down to mindset. There's something magical about that. Beside mindset, what is most important for you, Naj, in terms of your turnaround? What happened? What did you do? Taking action. That's a very important for mentees to do, to really take action. It's not right away, but what's good about with Mina and Emily, my other mentor is, it's also once a month a meeting with Emily and they don't monitor me like step by step, which is really good for me. I have the freedom to do my progress or my actions based on what I think is comfortable with me or what I can commit but going in the same goal. Thanks everyone, especially, of course, once again, thanks Mina and Naj for sharing so generously, so openly. I hope everybody sees the same way as I see it. It's literally magical, the relationship, the insight, the change in the situation, absolutely magical. Thanks for sharing that with us. Thank you, Hong, and thank you, Mina and Naj for sharing those stories. I'm floating in joy. <laughs> These are the kinds of stories that I am looking for when I set up the mentoring club. I really want to be able to change people's lives. And between the two of you, you have given us some very concrete examples of how that is possible, even though two people are coming from different worlds or geographically far apart, even culturally, right? To Mina's point about the principles of mindset, it works for everybody. So thank you very much for sharing all of that. I'm really, really joyful and much more inspired to keep the Mentoring Club going. You are in a room being sponsored by the Mentoring Club. And the Mentoring Club is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Our mission and vision is to connect mentors and mentees globally and help mentees achieve their career and life goals by working with mentors and developing the skills that they need in order to achieve their goals. Thanks again. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. And uh, thank you. Another time also. Yeah. All right. So with that, I'm going to count down with uh, many, many thanks to Naj and Mina for sharing with us and uh, anybody who came and to participate. Thanks, Sean and Liesel, founders of Silicon Valley Startups and the Mentoring Club. I'm going to count down to close the room. Wish you a good rest of the week. So five. Thank you, four, everyone. Thank you, Mina. Three, so two. Enjoy one. the journey.